tell you one thing, if a little green man pops out of me, I'm shooting first and asking questions later. You are on the verge of destroying the entire universe. Welcome to the Strange Podcast with Sam and Logan. If you enjoy the show, please go to iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you're listening. And please give us a good rating. If you want to share a story or have ideas for a future episode, you're welcome to visit us at www.thestrangepodcast.com. We look forward to hearing from you. Welcome to The Strange Podcast. This is episode 29. I'm Logan Marks. And I'm Sam Baxter. Today's May 4th, 2018. May oh. the 4th be with you. Oh, it's May 4th. Woo. Yeah, Star Wars. At least the old Empire Strikes Back, those type of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> we'll honor those ones, huh? <laughs> you're not gonna give it. To, you're not gonna give any props to the to the new ones. Uh, no. Not even the first. The the first episodes three. one, two, and three. Uh, even less. I don't know. <laughs> You've seen those, right? I don't need to explain myself. <laughs> I'll explain myself to any of you guys. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm I'm sorry. Good old Mark Hamill when he was, you know, wielding the the <clears throat> lightsaber. I'm with that. All the other ones, man. This is garbage. <laughs> garbage to you. I'm sure everybody's seen most of them now, so we should know. You should know that this one definitely wasn't that good, the newest one. And we already talked about it. We're not going to get into that again. Did you do anything special for the May 4th? I worked, man. Is that special enough? <laughs> <Did you work? laughs> I just worked. Worked like a stormtrooper. Yeah, sure, I know. He's doing the, doing the the bidding of the overlords. Yeah, of the evil empires. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Did you do anything good today? I've been working a lot, but we we got. I went to go to the theater because we had we had a free movie. Oh, nice! How'd you get a free movie? Well, like during the winter, we we there's this theater near my house, and they play. They play like kind of like before the movies before the you know go into a DVD. Oh okay. So, but they they uh we went to go watch a movie. I don't even remember what it was. The roads were icy. And we were like the only ones that showed up. So they <laughs> <laughs> so they're just like theater to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but they're like it's like you know the, and everybody everybody that worked there wanted to go home. <laughs> so they were just like uh uh we're we're not gonna play it. So like we're just gonna give you some free tickets and fuck yeah. And I was like all right that sounds good. So we just took off home and and just watched the movie at home, and so like it finally it's been around it's been a while because like they 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 don't run that great movies most of the time but sometimes there's a good one that comes out. <laughs> what the fuck are they? What are they like? Just like Indian movies or something like Spanish movies? What do you mean they're not that good? <laughs> well, you know they 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 they, they always play a lot of kid movies sometimes. There's a lot. Oh, of, I got you. I got it's you. a cheap theater, you know, and they always play like the. The kids stuff, the stuff that'll attract more people. On yeah, and yeah. And usually that's it. when they get more people. But sometimes they'll play like a, a decent movie, and we went to go watch that um, The Quiet Place. Quiet. Oh yeah, the new one yeah. that just came out. Yeah, it was okay. Uh, I don't want to give any spoilers. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to give any spoilers. I don't want to Black Panther this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't want. We don't want the Black Panther backlash. <laughs> so, so yeah. So, what, but the thing is. When we went there, we we got the we gave them the free tickets, right? And we we walk in, we're like, okay, so we you know I we go to the concession stand, we get the get popcorn, got nachos, and that'd yeah, be funny so if they're like they're like we can't honor these tickets. <laughs> <laughs> get the fuck out of here with they, these they, tickets. They were for that movie only. <laughs> you, you can, can only, only watch, watch that same movie. <laughs> You had to come back the next day while it was still showing. So when we play Ernest Goes to Camp, that's the only yeah, one you can watch. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh, Ernest. <laughs> so like we we get the we go in there we, we we get all this popcorn and stuff, and the guy that's serving us he's like taking forever to do everything. He's like I don't know. He's like half sloth. He's all like grabbing the popcorn real it's slow. All Neanderthal time. Like, yeah, kind of like yeah, like <laughs> Neanderthal. And the guy's just like like he's just like this was his first day or something. Shit. Like he didn't know how to pour pop. Even the pop was coming out slow. <laughs> He's just, you know, just all pushing the buttons. Uh, yeah, you know. it's supposed to come out one speed. <laughs> I don't know how, how he managed he, it, but how was he making that happen? I don't know how he managed it, but it was super slow. So like, yeah. the, so we got there, like the the trailer start show start playing, oh, and man. and I'm like, man, this guy's gonna hurry up because I'm gonna miss the trailers, you know. Yeah, yeah. And he's going. He's getting, we he's get. He's getting the nachos and stuff. And then finally, like he goes to pay. We go to pay, and he puts it like in his little computer system that they have. To, to pay and it, the, the computer's not working and he's all like touching the buttons all slow and I'm like, like it's already that one trailer's gone by 
And then finally, he doesn't even like call the manager. He calls someone to help him. He's just like sitting there all trying to help him. So, like, and he, it's always all trying to decode the whole thing. Yeah, he does, it's <laughs> obviously he doesn't know what he's doing. What's it running like Windows XP or something? <laughs> <laughs> like, why can't he figure this out? <laughs> Windows 95 is all. I know they're using, they're using an operating system that's like no, no longer supported. So the like, yeah, so, <laughs> so the manager finally sees what's going on, so she comes down here and she tried to get in. She tries to fix it, but they're like the trailer's already played, so she's like, "Oh, go just go and take the food." And we're like, "You sure?" She's like, "Yeah, go and take it." So we're like, "We got free." So we got a free move, and then we got free food. What? It was it was a good date night. It was a free date night. That's nice, man. So <clears throat> their fuck up all around is your guys' game. <laughs> <laughs> That's what half the reason why we go there because we get a lot of free because we that's not the first time we've gotten free tickets. <laughs> oh, it's not. <laughs> no. So you tell me you've met Sloth before? Or is that what you say? <laughs> well, that was the first time I saw Sloth there, but I mean, that's a, so that would be awesome. Like you should just go when you make sure he's there because you know it's gonna be free. <laughs> I, I know. I'll just like get the popcorn. It's like as soon as like, right before the movies play. Come on, man. I know. Yeah, just make up. sure he's working though, so you get all the shit free. <laughs> That'd be pretty nice. So I, I would like that. I think that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, so you got was, a free movie, free night. Yeah, man, so, that's pretty yeah, cool. Uh, that's pretty yeah. rare, man. Yeah, it's pretty rare. So we were pretty, we were pretty happy. Yeah, of course, and of course, the movie, even if it sucks, it's still a win because you didn't pay for anything. Yeah, I, I, a lot of people like it. There was a lot of flaws to it, to that, to the, to the movie. I know, but I, I saw it too, and yeah. we won't go into it. Maybe we'll go into it, but maybe, maybe later in about a month or two when may, most people have seen it. But there's yeah. way too many flaws like, for me that. Like we were talking earlier before you started the podcast. I know you didn't like it, but that's probably because you paid for it. <laughs> I did. I, I used real money from my real pocket. Did it my blood, sweat, and tears fucking paid for, and I was not happy. So since I got it for free, I thought it was, yeah, I was a little more. Uh, give I, was, it like 10, I was a little looser on my criticism. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> you go Rotten Tomatoes 100%. Because you, you didn't love that. Like, this deserves an Emmy. This deserves an Oscar. Goddamn! But yeah, <laughs> this is but the yeah, best I, movie ever. I I went in not not knowing how because I know everyone thought it was great. Like afterwards, I looked up the the reviews for it. Yeah, and everyone thought it was really great. Can. But I, it was it was okay, you know. But I, like I said, if I paid for it, I would have probably been mad. Um, yeah, it was like I said, I'm not mad. I was just disappointed. <clears throat> I, I I was really hoping for a lot more. But again, we won't go into it because we don't want any people to be mad at us. Right. So <laughs> we won't talk we about might, it. We might as well just go back and go into the news then. All right. Yeah. Before, <laughs> before, should, before we get should, some hate Should we go into the news before people get mad? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's go to the strange news. And we'll be right back. All right. It's time for strange news. It's strange news time. Oh, best news, best news in the world. We don't, deal, we don't deal with that bullshit, realistic politic stuff. No, no. A little strange. <laughs> so, so here we go. First news. <clears throat> Man charged with shooting smoke detector to keep it quiet. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best way to do it, I guess. <laughs> A Vermont man is facing charges that he used a shotgun to silence a smoke detector in the kitchen of his apartment. <laughs> shotgun? <laughs> yeah. Police say he, two shots fired Monday afternoon from a 20-gauge shotgun owned by 68-year-old Leroy Mason of Barton hit the adjoining wall of an occupied apartment. <laughs> so that's fucking do, you ever, do you ever notice that it's like old dudes that do that? Yeah, man. It's, <clears throat> they have no patience. Yeah. I guess so. I guess when you get old enough, you know, just anything just bothers the shit out of you. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> no, no. And then you take it upon yourself to just fucking <laughs> to do whatever it. you want. Don't you I'm remember Uncle Leo? Right remember Uncle Leo in Seinfeld? He was all stealing books. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. Leo, you can't be doing that. He goes, all I don't have to do is just act old. I'm confused. What am I doing? And they just let you go. <laughs> so this guy, this guy, he complained. Um, Mason complained about frequent false alarms from a smoke detector and, and was upset fire crews wouldn't relocate it. So he took it upon himself to relocate the smoke detector and shot it with a shotgun. <laughs> so, this guy, so anyway, um, nobody was hurt. Uh, the emergency crews, you know, disarmed him. There was no injuries, but uh, he pleaded not guilty Tuesday and he was released. So as of now, his, declar- his, his attorney declined to comment. So it's okay. Everybody's okay. Except for the fucking smoke detector, that shit's toast. <laughs> but yeah, man, this shit was. 
So was it his own smoke detector in his own house? Yeah. <laughs> He's fucking <What>? pissed. <laughs> this guy. You could take the battery out? <laughs> uh, I don't know, man. Well, yeah. there's ones that are, like, connected to the, the yeah, actual it, power it, to the house. That's true. So and maybe he just... Because I remember said, we used to have one, and shit, every time we cooked, it would go off. Oh really? Yeah. So like, I had to go to the breaker and just I just shut it <laughs> off because it would always go off all the time. Yeah. What are you guys burning all your food? What are you, <laughs> what are you doing? What are you no, it's like you could just like you just like it cooked anything. Like it was a little bit, of, just a little bit, it would go off. It was <laughs> so it, fucking annoying. Warming up soup, it would go off. <laughs> warming up soup, up, but it, it shut it off. Damn. Yeah. So, so uh, the guy, the guy took it upon himself to solve the problem. So problem solved. Kudos. <laughs> Use your gun, pal. Use your gun. You thought outside the box. Yeah, that's, that's right. <clears throat> that's, what you, that's what you do when you're in America. Yep. <laughs> so what do you got next? I got a pesky raccoon delays flight in uh, Saskatoon by nearly seven hours. <laughs> what? So a, a raccoon? The, so basically, the Air, Ca- uh, Air Canada flight bound for Toronto was delayed because a raccoon wouldn't get off the plane. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't get off. <laughs> please, after, raccoon, please get off. Please. After hours of staff trying to catch it, even with lassos, the raccoon eventually scurried off. <laughs> How the fuck did the raccoon get in the plane in the first place? It didn't say that, but. <laughs> <laughs> he was too conniving for the officials. Or <laughs> yeah. So, flight, pa- flight passenger uh, Damien Lee says that it was like a circus in here <laughs> trying to get the raccoon off the plane. Seven hours? <laughs> Yeah, it delayed the it delayed the plane seven hours. Pa- but uh, people were in it. They're like waiting. People were waiting in the in the airport to get for them to get that air get that uh, raccoon off. <laughs> <laughs> this pesky raccoon! <laughs> oh my gosh! I'm so, why did they call animal control? I don't know. They, apparently, they just tried. Well, they had you know you have people there to try to get them out, but they were basically chasing it and. Trying to sh- like shoot it out, <laughs> <laughs> man. You don't fuck with raccoons, though. I know those things are mean. <laughs> they are. They are. They're, yeah, they're really feral. Yeah, you don't want to fuck with those, man. <laughs> That's. <laughs> well, I'm glad everyone was okay and the flight went on. So, I yeah. assume, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so that so anyway that the uh, Damian Lee says that says that the flight eventually took off and landed in to- in, in landed in Toronto around 3 a.m. So. He got there. It just took him a little extra time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is pretty crazy. But uh, staying with, uh, <clears throat> you know, airplanes. Um, a woman was filled. Dry- a woman was filmed drying her underwear on an airplane by holding them close to the air vent above. Her head. <laughs> <laughs> so th- this one, <laughs> she was a born uh, Ural Airlines. Was seen in a video waving the black and white pants above her head <clears> for <throat> fellow travelers as she spent about twenty minutes drying them out. So, so why this woman's panties were wet while she got on the plane, I don't know. But uh, she wasn't embarrassed to remove her panties. And she was just holding them up and, you know, drying them out. Everybody could watch. <laughs> it, it says everybody was interested and they were confused, but uh, everyone just remained silent and watched. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it depends on how hot the woman is and what kind of underwear. Because there was um, like, an old lady with these big old no, granny it's panties. Nope, nope, nope. No. That's a young woman. I mean, okay. Like like I, like a woman, like twenties, thirties. Oh yeah, I would probably just let her do what she's doing. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, please continue, <laughs> continue, means. man. By all means, Is there you anything else th- you need to dry out? <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything else wet that you we, need? To get? We can get something else wet on you if you'd like. Or, I know. Pull this all over your titties. <laughs> Is your shirt wet? Oh my god, I spilled my drink on you. I'm sorry. You better take that please. off. Yeah, don't that please off remove you. your shirt. I don't like seeing that shirt wet. Please. So, so yeah, she didn't get in trouble. Like I said, everyone was cool. <laughs> it was cool. It, it was yeah, cool. I, just, I just imagine. It wasn't what... mad like at the raccoon. The raccoon was in trouble. Just, everyone just watched. I know they, uh... they kicked the raccoon off the plane. This woman can take her underwear off and dry them. Yeah. Just imagine yeah, if it was cool. someone like us with our fucking whitey tidies all trying to yeah. <laughs> kick their asses out of there. <laughs> Get that shit out of here. <laughs> yeah, you had a raccoon on a plane. This girl has a beaver out in the plane. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 like a zoo in there. Yeah, no, no. Noah's, Noah's Airlines are like a zoo. <laughs> yeah, man, this place is. 
I don't know. This girl was okay, though. Everyone was okay. Nobody was hurt. So. <laughs> <laughs> no animals were hurt during this this news story. <laughs> so what do you got? So I got this. I got this story where this woman accidentally tips a cafe seven thousand seven hundred thirty-two dollars, and she can't get her money back. <laughs> seven thousand. So this lady, yeah, this lady in France oh. was. In, she was enjoying some coffee and cake, and and her bill came out to like twenty-three seventy-six. So she goes and she uh, swipes her card, and when she she does it, she actually she puts her pin code in there, which is seven six eight six. Yeah. So she does that, but the thing was asking for a tip. <laughs> so so basically, <laughs> she she ended up you know tipping tipping the woman seven seven thousand six hundred eighty six dollars, and then Damn. paid for the rest of it. So she called a credit company. and They told her, well, you know, we can't do anything about this because. Uh, it wasn't a fraudulent charge. You you authorized, you authorized it. it. Yeah. So then she she decides to okay. I'm gonna go to the cafe and talk to the owner, and see she'll fuck no. and she she pay back her for money. And the owner's like, oh yeah yeah, we'll, we'll we'll pay back the money. So she's okay. She goes she goes down there. She 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 a couple days later she goes down there and the place is shut down. It's closed. They had filed for bankruptcy. Oh <laughs> shit. So, what the fuck? So now she can't get her money back because and 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 the lady that the 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 owner of the cafe she won't respond to any of the calls. Oh, so now God. she's she's stuck. She, and basically, that was she was like I guess she was unemployed. She, that was pretty much most of the money that she had. Oh man! So now she can't get it that's back. That's bad. That's that's that sucks for her. <laughs> and you know you know what really sucks is because this. I mean, have you ever been just kind of clicking or? Not really reading what you what you're signing, or not just signing, but looking at, and you just kind of click OK. Yeah, you just click OK and stuff. Yeah, yeah, or something, or hit yes. I mean, especially with like, like the cards, because it's all the same. You do it's like repetitive. Damn. You know, you do the same it thing is. every time. So like, if someone would, something would have came up and said tip, I would probably wouldn't have noticed. I would have probably put in my it, pin code. I know that, that's what's unfortunate is that I can, I haven't done that, but I can empathize with just kind of like not really, you know, just kind of let nonchalantly letting it go by. Mm-hmm. Jeez, man, that sucks. So it's not like yeah, nothing was wrong. I mean, she authorized it. That's the problem. Yeah. So yeah, she couldn't get her money back. So, dang. But they closed down over seven grand. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, mean, they. I guess they're they're probably probably shitty business. And they they just filed for bankruptcy and they shut down <laughs> within that period of time. So dang. It's, what it's are the bad chances luck, of that? I know that's crazy. Shit. Seven grand. Here we go. We're done. <laughs> You're done. You're done with it. <clears throat> Well, I got a I got a weird one here. Okay. Um, so the school was having a problem where there was a mystery pooper <laughs> leaving sh- leaving shit on the high school football field, but he was identified as a nearby school superintendent. <laughs> it was a superintendent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so, uh, so the the Homedale High School uh, were finding fresh piles of poop on a daily basis in the area surrounding the school's facility and f- and track fields. So, uh, the school what? resource officer and staff monitored the area and identified their mystery pooper as Thomas Tremaglini, 42 of Matawan. This uh, guy is the superintendent of the school next, next, uh, right next to them. Uh-huh. He's not that school superintendent, but the next district next to them. Oh. And he was, yeah, he was <laughs> even shit. <laughs> so, dude, how did they figure out? Did they put, like, cameras up or something? Yeah, or? They, they, they had, they, they started, like I said, they were staking it out. Oh, and Okay. Yeah, they were they were monitoring, it, monitoring <laughs> it and everything. I can just imagine the guys like sitting there squatting and they all like confront him. I know, I know. <laughs> we got him, guys. You got him. Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> He's shit now. He's shit. <laughs> swarm, Dude. swarm, fuck did, that. Did you swarm. <laughs> did, 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 did they ever find out why he was doing it? No, no, they didn't. He just they just said that he uh, faces charges of defecating in public, homeless, <laughs> and littering. <laughs> He got littering too. <laughs> I like how they put littering in there. I know. I know. He, well, he could have said he was, you know, fertilizing. He was, right? eating, he was eating the Snickers and he threw the wrapper on the ground while he's pooping. Know, it was a fucking baby Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the guy, so the guy, uh, he uh, asked for a uh, paid leave of absence and it was granted. So paid leave so, of absence. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah. I wish I could get a paid leave of absence for <laughs> yeah. being an idiot. 
Yeah, so you got to pay leave of absence. So he's <laughs> he's gone for now. <laughs> <laughs> for now. So well, I mean, he's gonna who knows? Back. I mean, they they haven't officially fired him yet. So. Oh really? So yeah, mad, as of this time, they haven't officially fired him. The mad pooper couldn't come back. No, no. <laughs> this is fucking shitting it up. Mad pooper two. <laughs> yeah. Strikes again. Right. So what do you got? So I got. So this taxi driver, in India. He was driving around, and they drove by this area where there's they, they saw a bear on the side of the road. <laughs> yeah. So he he gets out of the car, and the idiot decides he's going to take a selfie with the bear. Yeah, that's a good idea. So, <laughs> so he didn't know the bear was, was already kind of injured, so he was already pissed off. Ooh. So he went he went to go take, take the picture, and he got too close, and the bear pretty much mauled him. Mauled so, him to death? Yeah, he, fu- he, fu- he got killed. Oh. For, be, for being an idiot, so and they got oh like God. they got footage of it. Oh, they did. Yeah, so he's he's in there like you can see him. The that bear's just tearing him apart. It's like the like that DiCaprio movie. <laughs> oh, the the Revenant. Yeah. <laughs> oh shit. Just the yeah, bear's he not got as fucked big. up in that movie. Yeah, so he got pretty messed up. Did anyone try to help him? And you? Yeah, you, you you can see people in there trying to like throw rocks at the bear and trying to try to like distract it but it's yeah you're it's not just, gonna get in yeah, that bear <laughs> yeah that, that bear was uh that bear was going to town on so he was gonna get out oh shit damn yeah That's so yeah right. they, they pretty much <clears throat> took him out so there's a darwin award for that guy dang 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 <laughs> <clears throat> well i mean well, first of all that. i don't know why you would go and take like take a selfie with it well, you know, I think it's just probably the challenge. People are like, hey, nobody's really done this, so I'm going to do this, right? Yeah, but it's, it's a... got to be something stupid. Of I, I'm just trying to put my mindset in his. I mean, do, do people, like, not realize that the animals are... I mean, have they have they got to the point where, like, people don't realize that animals are dangerous? You know, they, they kind of see them on TV, and or they just <laughs> see them in zoos, and they think, oh, you know, they're... Yeah, they're, they're not, just docile. Yeah, they're you not, know, they're not going to do anything to them. No, I don't know, you know, I mean... When I see, honestly, when I see polar bears on TV, they look so docile. I think these guys aren't that bad. I know. Like, this is the worst. <laughs> That's a Coca-Cola bear. It's like it's, it's yeah, going to give yeah. me a Coke. <laughs> yeah. He's going <laughs> to, let me go to him and give him a hug. Yes. <laughs> so, like, I, yeah, I don't get that. I don't, I don't, like when I, sco- when I go hiking and I see something out there, I don't fucking go near it. I just go the yeah. other way. Yeah, of course. Because <laughs> I've confronted, like, uh, moose and stuff like that, and I won't go near a moose. Or, like, oh, fuck no. Because those you things shouldn't. are huge. Yeah, you know, like, if they'll, I see it. They'll I'd, trample you to death. Yeah, you, you just go the other way or try to. I've, I've never confronted a bear yet. Mm, mm. But What else have you seen out there? Have you seen, like, a cougar or anything? I've seen some deer. Like, the deer, like, I got pretty close to. Um, mm. But it was, like, a, it was a small. It was pretty small, so I didn't. I didn't like oh, try to go just, pet it, but it was I, you know, I was trying to get a good picture of it, but I wasn't mm-hmm. getting like you know, I wasn't gonna take a selfie with it. <laughs> yeah, no, nah, no shit. But I haven't confirmed like a bear or anything like super dangerous, but just the just like the like elk. Mm-hmm. But like I said, like I won't go near them because those things will tear you up. Is yeah, yeah, they'll 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 fuck you up. There's a lot. Of, I mean, a lot of those animals out there will. Jeez, do you at least go packing or not? That, yeah, I'll take I take a take a pistol with me. Yeah, that's probably the best thing to do. Leave the shotgun for turning the off the fire for- alarm. <laughs> <laughs> I put that at home the, for the fire. You don't need that in the wild. That, right, right I the need couch. that at home. <laughs> <laughs> that's required at home. <laughs> so yeah, what else man. do you got? Um, so couple lovely story. Couple uh, in Florida got married on the Florida <laughs> beach. All right. And uh, <clears throat> they were having a good time until the evening time, the evening hours. Um, you know, it should be magical, lovely. And these aren't a newly, these aren't like young. The man was 61, the woman was 49. So they were married at Clearwater Beach. And they look happy and everything in the wedding photo. <clears throat> but eventually, as the time went on, uh, cops were called because they fucking ended up duking it out <laughs> and fighting the, each other. <laughs> the, the married couple did? Yeah, they beat each other up. <laughs> So this was before or after they got married? This is this is, after, this is the night of. This is the magical night, you know, the <laughs> wedding night. <laughs> Bedroom. He's sixty one. She's forty nine. They're both virgins. They're both gonna experience something good for the first time in their life. And they're 
<laughs> and then they're, in the, they're in their bedroom in the honeymoon suite, and they fucked each other up. Not <laughs> but sexually, but they used their fists. They're physicals, huh? Yeah, man. The um, cop said that uh, the woman uh, physically started, you know, scratch attacking him, scratching him on the chest and mm-hmm. all over his torso, and he ended up, you know, punching the shit out of her. He grabbed her by the neck and pushed her to the ground. And I mean, is this a Florida wedding? <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, sorry, Florida. We love you. But <laughs> they're probably cousins too. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, shit. <laughs> but uh, at least the guy, you know, he got he got uh, arrested on misdemeanor domestic battery and was later released. Um, she was charged with felony battery and had to pay a post a five hundred dollar bond. Oh wow! So it sounds like the girl kind of started it. She just started attacking him. Hmm. Yeah, and so the judge ordered them not to have any contact with each other, so I guess, you know, they have to stay virgins. <laughs> maybe maybe and, they, just were, they didn't do it for so long, they didn't know how to do it right. I don't know, man. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he tried putting it somewhere. It's the wrong didn't. hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I, I told you to put it in my ass, not the other hole. It's like, it's like, it's like I want to do it. You don't normal. have to get no, physical. Man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> So they were happy in the daytime, but no, yeah. man, they fucking, they went to Florida town. Oh, day. right. That sounds, that's a Florida wedding. That's, like, that's <laughs> how it works out now. <laughs> I've never been to Florida, man, but if you say so. <laughs> <laughs> you got any, any other news? Cop, cops in China are hunting down a tourist who stole a dying dolphin from the beach by throwing it over his back and carrying it off, putting it in his car. So, and people got footage of a girl, of a guy, he's, he's a... He's in swim shorts. And he's walking around and he sees this, this dolphin. Um, this dolphin basically beached itself, okay. and so the guy goes up there and he takes the golf and puts it, puts it over his back and takes it to his car, and people watch him while he's do, huh? Why? I don't know. He, he him and his his girlfriend was in, was right behind him, took it to his car and then took off, and so the so cops are looking for him. So nobody knows why he, this was in China. So nobody knows why he did it. So they don't know if they're gonna if he goes and try to gonna eat it. Yeah, is he like is he like a fucking chef and making mahi mahi or something? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what the hell? But I guess I guess like the video got put on the internet and everyone's like going all crazy about it. Fuck. So he just him and his woman just carried it off. Yeah, he he put it on his shoulder. It wasn't like a huge one, so he was able to like put it over his shoulder and take off with it. But you know, like if it's if, if something like that beaches itself, you know, you, the best thing to do is just try to push get it, it back, back in the yeah, water. Get it back in the water. But he just picked it up and walked off with it. Took off, put it in his car, and drove what? off. Oh, did, did he think it was gonna survive in his car? But people think that he, people think that he might want to try to eat it. Or damn, <clears throat> damn, that's weird, man. That is weird. Why, why would you take it? It's like unless like he he actually wanted to eat it. But I mean, I don't know. That's that's a good question. I don't know why you would try and take a dolphin, especially when it was beached. Like, and and nobody nobody said anything to him at all. Well, because they have footage of it, so people were watching him. So uh, nobody like I know you think somebody would go in and say, "Hey, what the hell are you doing?" You know, we could put that back in the ocean. It's not yours. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But you know, maybe people if a guy's crazy enough to fucking steal a dolphin. <laughs> you don't you want to fuck with. Fuck. Him. <laughs> I don't know, man. He felt like, I feel like he just deserves an ass kicking. Yeah, he probably does. <laughs> Fuck you, man. Put that shit back. Shit belongs in the sea, not in your fucking car. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. Where was that at? Uh, it was in China. Oh, in China. Well, I guess that's why nobody did anything. People just kind of... Aren't they kind of more reactive there? Uh, I don't know. If they... I mean, they just kind of watch them, right? They don't do Yeah, they're not really anything. like... They're not gonna really like if it was. I mean, who knows? Maybe if it was in Florida, he wouldn't have got his ass kicked. <laughs> <laughs> Some people. Who knows? <clears throat> what is, what else you got? I just got one last one where, um, so a man robbed same bank day after release from prison. So this guy he robbed the same bank that he got busted for, um, for robbing previously, mm-hmm. and he got put back in jail for thirty months. So. <laughs> The guy, he was already, he had already served time, like I said. Mm-hmm. Uh, robbed that bank. They don't know why he went after the same bank, but he did. He just took a, he took one, gra- he took a grand. That's all? He got a, he took a grand. <laughs> 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 yeah. And he got 30 months in prison. So he got caught again? 
Yeah, same bank. Man, same you, think if he's, got... you think if he's going to do it twice, like he would have learned how to do it right the first time because, you know, learn from his <sighs> mistakes. <laughs> and he would have yeah, he... got a grand out of it. <sighs> a grand, man. What are you going to do with a grand? <laughs> Like, like really, and Grant's like twenty dollars, you know. Like, there's nothing. There's like, there's almost like no value to that. Like, it's not worth taking. It's not worth getting trouble like, for. I well, say. I mean, he's got free room and board now. Shit. Yeah, <laughs> we just wants to just. Maybe maybe we wanted, just want to go back to prison. Maybe he huh? just wanted to go to practice prison. Man, I think it'd be other way. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows, man? A grand, same bank. I don't understand. I don't get it. <laughs> I don't. I, I don't understand how he got caught again. Because like you think, okay, I know cameras. Yeah. It, well, I did it the first time. You know, maybe maybe I should wear a mask or <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> or you know, do something different. Maybe maybe I get it right this time. Maybe take more money. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> maybe go for a bigger score. I don't know. Is that important in nowadays? Maybe not. Shit, I've never robbed the bank, so I don't know. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's just me. I wouldn't go rob a bank, but like if I was gonna do it twice, in the same, I would try to at least do it better the second time around. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> yeah. I would try not to get caught. You know, at least they'll get caught. Yeah, you think you would uh, have 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 got it set up by now? I just wondered. You could like, have the... thought about it. You could have thought about it in prison and think, yeah, man, have... what could I have done different? And then you got all kinds of people in there. You could have asked questions. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Uh... <laughs> you basically going to crime school, and you didn't. Even yeah, I know. You, you didn't even get any minds. like pointers. You did, yeah, didn't even take a test or do anything to get you know better himself in there. Well, he's back, so now he can get more pointers. <laughs> <laughs> Third time's a charm. Third time's yep. a charm. <laughs> so that's all I got. All right, so okay, we should probably go into the main topic, which is uh, what I'm calling things that go bump in the night. So when we get back, we'll be talking about uh, scary things under the bed, in the closet, or anywhere in the house. So see you when we get back. back okay right. we're gonna be talking right. about uh things that go bump in the night so did you know that 64 percent of adults admit that they are scared of the dark 64 percent. yeah that's a lot if you think about it i mean are you wow no i, I didn't know that are you scared are you scared of the dark like if no no not anymore i used to be when i was a kid but not anymore uh probably like my <clears throat> i now i don't really care when i was younger you know, like darkness kind of, you know, because you would think of all the scary stuff that. Oh, might... yeah. Your mind runs wild with whatever could be out there and that yeah. could get you. Because I remember when I was a kid, you know, we'd always like read those like, scary stories. Oh, yeah. And then like you'd yeah. go to bed and like you're like, oh. You, you'd you be know. thinking about it, right? Yeah. And you don't want to put your foot like over the edge of the bed because you think someone's going to grab you. <laughs> no, no, I still won't do that. But <laughs> that has nothing to do with the dark. <laughs> <laughs> I so don't even do that shit in the morning, in the daytime. Yeah. I know. <laughs> So yeah, research, well. research says that two-thirds of adults dislike turning out the lights before they go to bed, and 36% of them have a feeling that there's something in the room with them. As many oh, wow. as 20% of adults polled say that they check their bed or closets for monsters before they turn off the lights before they go to bed. Jeez. So according to research, the average adult wakes up at least twice a month feeling scared that something menacing is hiding within their room. Oh, that's not good. So... Yeah. Uh, let's see. So I, like, I recall, like I say, I recall in my twenties. You know, if I was reading scary books or something, mm -hmm. you know, I would, it, it for some reason, like, well, I'd read, and then like all of a sudden, like, it, all my imagination would get all crazy. You know, and like, oh, mm -hmm. like I'd hear something outside, and freak out. Oh, okay, I gotcha. Yeah, you know, and so you know, I'd envision like some crazy cre creature, you know, waiting to grab me under the bed. But now that I'm older, you know, I'm more scared of taxes and paying paying for my health care. Yeah. And now, uh, yeah, like that's a real shit. That's real scary. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's getting, getting old. <laughs> yeah, I'm not scared of the fucking boogeyman anymore. I know. No, <laughs> I want him to start paying rent. <laughs> in my house. I know. So yeah, <laughs> you I know. Put I, in, now, man. 
you got now, now I'm like wishing that the guy, the monks would come and drag me out of the bed so I don't have to deal with this shit anymore. Don't yeah, have to I know, work I know, in the morning. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm free, damn it. I'm no, free. No, oh, monks no more the bed. <laughs> oh, monks out of the bed. Please take me away. Yeah, I know. No. <laughs> You'd be like, God, there's a monster. Please don't take me. Don't take me away. Someplace, someplace nice and dark where I don't have to worry about it anymore. <laughs> The tax man can't come. <laughs> <laughs> the evil tax man. <laughs> so I got some stories here about things that go bump in the night. So the story's called "The Monster Under My Bed." The monster under my bed. Wait a minute. Is that like the movie with our Fred Savage, Little Monsters? Little Monsters. Oh man, remember I that, seen that movie? one? Yeah, <laughs> so that one forever. <laughs> yeah, I know. Remember, remember that fucking movie? Isn't that like Howie Mandel? Like he was a yeah, he was a Howie Mandel. <laughs> That movie was so shitty. I remember liking it back then. I don't even remember what that what is. I just know there was a monster. I don't even know what the what the plot was. So I'm gonna tell you, man. Like I about six, maybe eight months ago, I started. Nah, maybe it was last summer. It was on Netflix, and I kind of started watching. I was like, I remember liking this movie. Let me see mm-hmm. what it's about. And I got like maybe a quarter through it or half. I'm like, fuck this. And you started like, getting cancer in your head. It was just, it was horrible, man. And I was like, oh god, why? Like, you know, as a kid, you liked it, right? Yeah. You didn't know any better. But. Yeah, I mean, they're they're made for kids. Yeah, I mean, Fred Savage couldn't even get couldn't even save it. No, man. No, it was it was bad. But <laughs> when you said that under the bed, I'm thinking that movie it was like, oh. God, no, don't make me feel that. That is scary. <laughs> oh, well, that's basically, I was just going to talk about the plot of that movie. No, no. No, you ruined the rest of the podcast. I know. So. <laughs> and then I was going to go into excerpts of Oliver North's <laughs> trial. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> All right, well, so what do you got? What do you got? <laughs> All right, so, <laughs> so Julie, Julie and her daughter, Erica, who was, about, who was five at the time, had moved into a small two-bedroom home. It was the fall of 1992, and it had been a bad year for Julie. She had gotten divorced, and she had lost her mother to cancer. Mm. She thought her luck had turned around when she found this new house, which was it was an amazing price. So she moved in to the new place, and was she was looking forward to basically getting getting started over again. You know, re- restarting her life, mm. rebuilding it, rebuilding her life with her daughter. So a few months a few months go by. And there was nothing out of the ordinary for the new place. Just regular sounds of the house settling, you know, getting used to. Yeah, creaking used, or yeah, anything the creaking. Like that. It, which you know, you can move into a new place. That's that's kind of stuff that you, you hear all the time because it's all new to you. Mm-hmm. So, so her, so Erica was adjusted to all the changes as best a child could, while dealing with divorce and the, the and her grandmother's death. But yeah. then something happened that for some reason the atmosphere of the house had changed, and Erica didn't seem to want to sleep in her room anymore. And when Julie asked her why, she would say she was scared of the monster under the bed. So yeah. Julie Julie didn't think much of it at the time, and she kind of just chalked it up to you know a scary movie that she saw at her father's house, and because her dad had let her watch a scary movie a few days ago, and she just figured eh, it's just you know imagination, yeah, she's just, being, yeah sure. being being you know, overactive. Yep. So Julie figured it was just a phase, and Erica would get over it. But as time went on, she became more frightened about sleeping in her room. And she would she would end up spending most of her nights sleeping with her, in her mother's bed. And Julie was getting a little bit tired of it, so she decided that to help Erica get over it. That she needed to have Erica start sleeping in her her bed. So one night, uh, Erica told her, you know, "It's like we're both gonna sleep in your room, and I'm gonna prove to you that there's nothing there." So one night, that Erica and Julie both lay quietly in the bed, and for a while, it's pretty peaceful. It's quiet, so Julie can hear Erica slight slightly snoring. So Erica starts sleeping and feeling as though that she had proved Erica that there was nothing to be scared of Julie closes her eyes and she tries to get some sleep too and then all of a sudden she can hear the voice of a small child whispering Erica come visit me under the bed so Julie opens her eyes wide she's like she's starting to wonder did you know did I imagine that Mm -hmm. and so so she lays there patiently listening she's just you know making sure she, she doesn't hear it again and then sure enough she hears the voice again come visit me and then so julie sits up and she's like doesn't know what to do and when she sits up uh she puts her leg down on the side of the bed on the floor and then she could feel something touch her ankle and also and so all of a sudden julie feels like this cold icy thing like feeling her like fingertips on her on her legs Mm. And so she pulls pulls back her feet back up on the bed, and she's and when she does that, she wakes up Erica. And when she, Erica wakes up, she she she's like, "Oh, is the monster calling for us?" 
And so this like freaks her out even more. Mm-hmm. So all of a sudden they're both huddling on, on the bed with the blankets over them. And then she could feel something start pulling the blanket off the bed. Yeah, there you go. And so she's trying to keep the blanket on top of her, but the force gets stronger and starts pulling the, the blanket even more. And Ju- and Erica, or Julie, says, fuck this shit, I'm, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so she's just like, I'm done, you know. So she grabs Erica and she runs out of the room. And ever since that night, I guess uh, Julie just kept the room shut. Just kept it shut? Yeah, so she didn't, so she kept it shut. So she goes and she decides, I'm going to go find a priest. And because she was a Catholic. Okay. So she goes and she tries to find a priest. Uh, she ends up finding finding one. And she basically gets her priest from her church. And he comes down and he blesses, blesses the house. And he mainly goes in and blesses the room. Days go by and nothing happens anymore. So, and Julie can't explain what happened after that or why, but she figures that she believes that the spirit is something that whatever was in there is gone now because like, she says like the, the atmosphere of the house kind of changed after that. And, and, uh, and Erica started behaving, you know, nor started became more normal. You know, she wasn't as afraid anymore. Sure. So after that, she doesn't know what brought it into the house she's she there was nothing there was like nothing really serious and she just basically thinks what happened was that whatever evil spirit the, the the priest told her that there might have been an evil spirit in there so she thinks whatever the whatever was going on with with uh, erica her the kid um like because she was dealing with the divorce and she was dealing with the grandmother's death mm-hmm. that maybe like that sorrow or the all the, that deep emotion was maybe manifesting as something oh under the, from so, her from her like under the bed and maybe maybe when the priest came and, and blessed it you know she saw okay maybe it's getting taken care of you know but she can't explain what happened you know the stuff that she saw and why she saw it but she thinks maybe it was like an evil spirit or maybe because you know because of the way her daughter was feeling mm-hmm. and maybe that attracted it and kind of brought it into the home but it was able to be <clears throat> cleansed with you know with with a, with a blessing so was there any other issues after that? After that, she she said no. Everything was just like like nothing had happened. Like it was just back to normal. Hmm. So it was almost like alter ego of the daughter or something. Or yeah, that's what that's what I was kind of thinking when I was reading it. I was it's some, it's like she was saying, you know, like some maybe maybe it's something like you know her her emotions were so strong because that's a lot of shit to go through, especially for yeah, a kid. Sure. Yeah, yeah, sure. And maybe you don't, that, know, you don't know how to get them out, and you know. Yeah, and maybe you just manifesting it to the point or even like you know she maybe she talked about it enough to to the mother that the mother was just getting it was getting in her head because she was going through all the same shit too you know hmm. <clears throat> sounds interesting so at least it got went away the the shitty part is um it pulled on her leg yeah, that's fucking scary. <laughs> that part sucks. I don't know. I mean, what do you think would be worse? Um, somebody calling for your child or somebody actually grabbing and trying to, like, pull you down? Oh, probably, yeah, calling for my child would be more scary because you can't, especially because you're not, if, because you know, like, in the past, you know, something was in there calling for her and you weren't there to protect her. Yeah, exactly. It had been, like, basically stalking her. Um, thankfully, she survived, but that sucks, man. So I got another story. Uh-huh. This one's uh, about a man called Theodore Edward Conies. So in in 1941, a man by the name of Theodore had fallen on hard times. Uh, he had no place to go, so he decided, you know, his best option would be to go visit his old friend Philip Peters in Denver, Colorado. So they hadn't seen each other for a long time, so he decided, you know, let's go see see what's going on. So when he arrived at Mr. Peter's house, he found that the house was unlocked and with nobody there, nobody was there. Uh, so I guess Peter, his wife, had broken a hip, so he was spending a lot of time at the hospital. Okay. So he was, you know, he was t- watching his wife, so his, the house was basically not being watched for long periods of time. So Coney didn't know this, but he just, the door was open, he goes in and nobody's there so he decides you know I'm, I'm just and while he's in there he finds he finds a a small door which leads to like a small room in the attic mm. and so he's like well you know 
Konis was a pretty small guy, so he realized that he was he was easily able to get through the door. I guess it was a, a door that was size most normal size people wouldn't be able to get through. But okay. since he was a smaller guy, he was able to he was able fit to get in there. there. Yeah, he fit through there pretty easily. <clears throat> so uh, Son he, of a bitch. So not wanting to live out on the streets and like a homeless person, he felt the best option would be living in a small attic throughout <laughs> the, <laughs> through the winter. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know? That yeah, was, okay. So he, he stayed in the room while Peters was at home. Mm-hmm. And when Peters left to go to work or to go to the hospital, uh, he would slip out of the hiding spot. Or he would, you know, he'd go take a Come dump, out and eat. Yeah. yeah. And feed, you know, get some free food, stretch his legs a little bit, you know. Sure. And so... Konis did this for about a month or so, and then one day, uh, he slipped out of his room and started making himself a snack, because uh, he thought that Peters had left that day, and basically that day Peters wasn't feeling that well, so he decided he was going to stay home, and so he was kind of just sleeping in bed, and he slept, he, you know, he, he just kind of stayed in bed. Uh, Peters was then woken up by the noise uh, that that Konis was making in the kitchen, Mm-hmm. So he gets up to investigate. Uh, so he finds, so he gets up. He finds he finds Coney's in the kitchen. But you know, it's been a long time since he's seen him. Yeah. So he didn't really recognize him. So they Plus had he's a, kind of a little groggy and shit too, right? Yeah, you know, he's, he's a little sick. You know, so they see, so they have they have a struggle. They start fighting. Ooh. And you know, because he's trying to he, he there's an intruder in his house. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. So so they start they start struggling with each other, and Coney eventually ends up pistol whipping the 73 year old man to death oh man so that's no good yeah so coney's in deep shit now now he's he's the monster in the closet now <laughs> yeah no shit so um not under the bed he's in the closet <laughs> so he he he's doesn't know what to do so instead of you know getting the fuck out of there and and leaving town he decides well, i'm just gonna go back in the attic and hide yeah i'm just gonna fucking go back for, there i've been here for a month you know what the yeah fuck, who, who's gonna find nobody me? knows i'm here <laughs> nobody fucking <laughs> i should hide but i'm just gonna go back to where i fucking went and well, stay around the scene of the crime yeah well this guy you know he, he's pretty he's not the great on uh great life choices because he's already living in an attic above his friend's yeah, house without say. even saying anything so. and he, be, he just fucking killed the homeowner yeah okay. so all right so He's not getting any Man of the Year awards and he's <laughs> I get it. So what happens next? So he goes up into the attic and he starts hiding. So a few days later, uh, Peter's body is found. Because somebody had come by to see if Peter's was okay because it's been a couple of days and they haven't seen him. You know, he hasn't been to the hospital. He hasn't talked to his wife. Somebody comes. His I think his son comes by and, and goes and they find him dead. Ooh. They find Peter's dead in there and the police show up and they're puzzled by the death because there was no forced entry and. They don't know how who came in there or how they got in there or why he was dead or like yep. who would kill him. Yeah. So they they could they tell the, they could tell there was a struggle and he was hit. Yeah. But there was no struggle so they, with who yeah. or anything. I got it. So they couldn't figure out who had murdered him. So a short time later, Peter's wife returns from the hospital. So she's she's healed up a little bit and she's living alone in the house, and she has a couple of caretakers that would stay with her. But as they as they're living there, because as they're living there, they would hear noises and they would hear, you know, things would be moved around or things would disappear. Mm. And and um, so all the people that would take care of her would, wouldn't would stay because they they thought the house was haunted. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them would be too frightened to stay, you know. Mm-hmm. And so because because of that, uh, Peters, uh, Mrs. Peters, she decides that she's going to go live with her son. So they leave the house there unattended. So it's just kind of there, and, you know, they have somebody come and check on it every once in a while. So that fucking guy won. He's got the house to himself. So, yeah, so Coney, so Coney's like, you know, he's, he he wins the house. He gets it's the house now. Uh, so the stories of that, because he's there, you know, time some time goes on, and the stories of the house being haunted start growing because people will drive by the house. You know, they see lights come on. You know, they would, they would see, like, a... People would hear like noises if they walk, you know, you walk in front, you'd hear people like somebody was in there and they know that nobody was supposed to be in there. Sure. So it became like a house that was just haunted and people would just accept that. So, but while this, while that was happening, the cops decided, you know, like we get, we got to figure out this murder, you know? Mm-hmm. So they decided they're going to stake the house. So they, 
they get a couple cops and they're they surround the house you know they start watching it one day when they're surveillance in the house um coney makes a, a huge mistake and he opens one of the window blinds and he's looking out and they see him in there oh shit <laughs> there's a ghost <laughs> there's a dude in there <laughs> so so they go in and they they raid the house and they finally find him and they pretty they much find, they found his little door they they found the little door but um they they found they didn't find him in the in the in the the room. They just found him in the house because they kind of raided it as soon as they saw him. Oh shit! And so they busted. And then you know he he confessed that he was living in that little little that little room in the, up in the attic. Shit. So it, they didn't catch him until like a year later. Like, Holy shit! Oh, yeah, so it was like eleven months before they they even they found it. Were they staking it out for that whole time? Yeah, because they this was like an unsolved murder and. And and because of the, I think what happened was because of the ghost sightings, they were kind yeah, of thinking people kept saying they yeah, kept seeing things. So maybe there was, I think the ghost kind of or the the cops kind of caught on and said maybe maybe there's somebody in there. Yeah, you know, so so they kind of that's why they decided to stake the house. They 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 eventually caught him and and the cops could under the cops were like they didn't understand how he could get into that little because I guess it was really fucking small. <laughs> Oh, was it? Yeah, and the guy wasn't—he wasn't a big guy, you know. So there was like, oh, no, no wonder we didn't catch this guy, or even we no one even looked to see if the door was was they, we, you know, they didn't expect anybody to be up there. Gotcha. So eventually, he was he was arrested. He was arrested and convicted of the murders of Peters, and he later died like in 1996 in in the hospital prison. Oh, really? Yeah. You know, um, talking about um, the the first story where the girl was, you know. Getting tugged in the bed. Mm-hmm. Um, I just I had a story one time when we were I had a friend like when we were in school and he was telling me he used to tell me that he used to like Mickey Mouse a lot mm-hmm. and uh, and he used to said man I, I used to be in so in love with like Mickey Mouse you know as a kid I I just wanted to go to Disneyland I wanted to watch all things Mickey mm-hmm. I mean Mickey was my life uh, you know at, at one point he was like seven or eight right mm-hmm. <clears throat> he just he just adored him. And so he said, he said that, um, he said he was, this is when he was telling me this, like, and we were like in middle school, or like maybe like ninth grade or something. He was like, yeah, he goes, I remember at one point when like, like when I was like eight years old, that little, that little space between your, your, um, headboard and your, in your mattress mm-hmm. on the front, at the front of your bed. He says, yeah, I remember one night I, I, I was, I, I reached my hands down there. And there were some other hands touching my hands. They were, like, grabbing my hands and playing with my hands. And he says, I was playing with those hands for, like, a good 20, 30 minutes. He goes, and I just, in my mind, I was thinking it was Mickey Mouse. Oh, my. And, <laughs> and, we, were, and we were just touching each other's hands. And he says he'd be grabbing my hands, like, holding my hands. And uh-huh. I'd be holding his. And we'd be kind of playing and just giggling. And I'd be having a good time. He says, but he goes, I, I, he goes, I swear, for, like, that night I was playing with some hands, some other hands that were that were playing with me back. And he goes, and I just thought it was Mickey Mouse. He goes, I was just playing the whole, like, until I went to bed, I fell asleep. And so, like, he never thought about, like... No, like in, his he mind, he, his, in his mind, no, when he was later on, that's when he was telling me, he was like, man, that, that shit was fucked up. <laughs> that is fucked up. Because, <laughs> like, 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 later, I'd be like, what the hell, what's going on, well, you know, like... Like I said, it was much later because you know it was just something. It was a good memory, right? When you have yeah. good memories, you know, then you know you either really stand out or mm-hmm. you know they just kind of go and filed away. Yeah, and I can and see like was, when I can see like when you're a kid, you know, like to because you're innocent, you know, you don't think exactly. Yeah, you don't you, think it's somebody under there trying to hurt you or anything, or, or yeah, or or a so, spirit. Yeah, because to him it was Mickey Mouse. Yeah, exactly. Because he loved Mickey Mouse so much, so he thought he was playing with Mickey Mouse. He they were playing like patty cake and everything, mm-hmm. holding hands, touching each other. I think and he said he he was just, they were playing for a while. He says yeah. yeah. He goes, he so says, I think those this, other hands they were this, real. He said those were real hands. He goes I felt those hands and we played. Oh wow, that's I think the scarier part is like later when you when you get up when you start you growing real, up in years and you start realizing you realizing wait a that, minute yeah that shit shouldn't have happened. <laughs> like you're laying in bed and you're just like what the fuck what was the that? fuck was that <laughs> like why was. Who, what the fuck? Yeah, then you know that's when you you have the epiphany like I shouldn't have fucking been doing that. Yeah, that's <laughs> that that's shit should have happened. Especially when you're still sleeping in the same bed. And, you know, you're older. I mean, you you get your teens. You're still kind of in the same bed. You know. Yeah. If, yeah, if you yeah, I would want to yeah. sleep in that bed. Every- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I, I mean, when he was telling me when he was telling me he didn't 
He he didn't seem scared. He almost, he oh, still really? kind of almost had the feeling like, yeah, man. He goes, I remember I was playing with Mickey Mouse. I had that in my mind that it was Mickey Mouse. So it was still a happy memory for him. Yeah, it was more like a happy memory for him. Like, he oh. goes, that's what I thought, and that's what I felt. He goes, I didn't feel like it was anything, like, malicious or, right. or you know, just mean or anything. He says, it was it was a good memory. He goes, uh, he goes but I, I, goes, I don't think I was playing with Mickey that night. <laughs> 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 I'm like, no, man, I don't think you were either. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. If I put my money on it, I'm I'm gonna say, no. <laughs> say yeah, that's not Mickey Mouse, bro. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, when you said that, that 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 brought up that memory when he told me that, you know, mm-hmm. that that he had that he had that feeling and he he played with Mickey and he had a good time. And I was like, damn, that's fucked up. I'm I remember um, a friend of mine. She she couldn't sleep, so she was just kind of sitting up, and uh, she liked to. She liked to look, like had, she had this little mirror that she liked to look into and just kind of you know she would check her, check her makeup and stuff. She, makeup she, at night, or, or check you know check like to see, <laughs> like her pores. You know those like those those uh, those magnified ones. Gotcha, gotcha. So she yeah. and she was she was like you know look checking see if her eyebrows were on point or whatever. Yeah. But and and she would do that when when she couldn't sleep or like, you know she would always like to look in the mirror. Okay. And so, she said she was like sitting there one time. And so she, she couldn't sleep, so she was just kind of sitting on the side of her bed looking, because she had her mirror on the side of the bed, and she was just kind of looking at it, had the little lights on her. And she said while she was looking at it, she thought she she saw someone behind her. Okay. So she would turn around and nothing was there. And so she thought, oh, maybe it's just, you know, it was in her mind, you know, because she's up in the middle of the night, so she just kind of has an overactive imagination. Mm-hmm. So she's she's in there and she's looking, you know, checking her eyebrows and stuff again, and and all of a sudden she feels a hand touch her back. Ooh! And when she did that, she said she just fucking screamed. <laughs> she couldn't like ran. murder. Yeah, just ran out of the room and like all her her family came out and and every you know everybody's like her her parents are like freaking out because they thought like someone had broken into the house and you know tried to stab people or you know whatever. Yeah. So everyone's like yep, freaking out because they thought they thought something had happened. You know, like somebody. Did got killed or something and yeah. everybody everybody ran to the room to check to see what was going on and she was in there just freaking out like hyperventilating and the, all the lights were turned on and and there was nothing there nothing there and then after that like nothing happened she said it was just that one time and she didn't she didn't see it again never had any any other experience after that did she actually see what the whatever person was that looked behind no, she just head? like what she, she she what she did see in the mirror. She it it was just like something, but she didn't know what it, you know. She could see what it was. Gotcha. You know, it's like you, you just you know, there's like a movement behind you. Gotcha. But she never experienced anything else after that. After that, she didn't really experience anything else. You know, just normal creaks. You know, from the house, but yeah. but but nothing like as as nothing ever manifested. Yes, touched her again. Yeah, as severe as that. But that'd be pretty bad. That'd be pretty scary if that happened. <laughs> that would yeah, be I, pretty shitty. So I I've never really had I mean I've I've had some stuff happen but nothing like when I'm in like laying in bed, you know, nothing like under the bed or in the closet. Well, I mean, yours yours is mainly that that story where um something like Grim Reaper was coming after you, right? Yeah, just those, but I know those are just basically from your mind from, or yeah, from my mind. So I I don't it's just the way that's just the way my mind works. But gotcha. like I don't think it's anything like Paranormal. Sinister or yeah. evil, yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah, that's 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 interesting. Well, it's, it's just kind of it's just kind of weird that like it just happens once, you know. And yeah. Then, like it doesn't. Ha- you think you'd like it would be like recurring. You know, if it's if it's some if it's something like supernatural, you know, you think if it's if it's something like a ghost, it it could you know it'd be there. More than just <laughs> yeah, it'd keep time. coming after you. Yeah. Well, at least that's you know when I hear other stories of people getting being haunted or. Mm-hmm. Or possess, or you know, poltergeist, or whatever. But there's yeah. always more than one incident. Sure. Or it builds no, I, up to I, I something got you. bigger. I got gotcha. you. I mean, I, I I agree with you. Usually, that's how it seems like it should be. You know, especially like if you live in a house that's totally haunted. You know, usually everybody there is, or somebody, one person at least is, you know, is attracting the spirits or something. And they're the one that experience everything. But I don't know. That's interesting. Um, 
And again, like my friend, he he said that he his house wasn't haunted. He never said it was. I think, mm-hmm. I, and that could have just been his imagination. You know, yeah, I, I just wonder what like he was playing with on there. <laughs> I know, <laughs> you know, it's like yeah. a dead mouse or something. <laughs> I know, but he said it was playing back with him, man. It was touching his hands. Too, I know so. that's what makes it creepy. Just the idea of it, like. Mm-hmm. It's like creeps me out. It's all holding his hands and yeah. playing with him, and you know all this <laughs> stuff. He didn't see anything because you know it's just that that little uh, spot that's open between the bed and the headboard is just so small, right? Yeah, because you can only put your hand you can only put your hands down there if it's like, well, you know, the bed's you know, not pushed all adult. the way in, you know. Yeah, a grown adult has a harder time. He was a little kid, so he's like slipping down there, slipping a Mickey. Yeah. <laughs> Playing to Mickey, flipping to Mickey. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, we're getting about that time. We can close yep. up. So we will uh, see, see you guys you next week. week. So right. well, everybody have a good night, good day, evening, fucking lunch. <laughs> and like I say, we'll see you guys next week. Until then, stay strange. All right. Bye bye. Bye. If you enjoy the show, please go to iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, or wherever you're listening. And please give us a good rating. If you want to share a story or have ideas for a future episode, you're welcome to visit us at www.thestrangepodcast.com. We look forward to hearing from you.